Hello. This is the story of a BMW 320 diesel E46. Last Friday, I spent some time with Ian from Cherished Vehicle Insurance Services because he wanted to spend some time with Jeff Buys Cars to help get his car over the 300,000 mile mark. I'm going to show you some video of what happened on the day. And then I'm going to show you some video of what happened next, because at the end of this video, I'm going to ask for your help for you to put in the comments to tell Ian what to do with his car. But wait until you find out what happened and then let us know in the comments what you think he should do, because he can't decide and I can't advise him. So it's down to you guys in the comments. What should we do with this BMW E46? Right, roll the first part of the tape. So Satnav says 1.8 miles. The car says two miles to go. When did you last reset your MPG on this car? Have I? No. Have I, have I ever? Have you ever reset have it? I ever? Go on, what's it on? Average MPG? 44.7. 44.7. Apparently I have 369 miles left until I pay lots of money for diesel. But you, you, you can't sniff at those motoring costs, can you? You've owned it since it was like five, six years old. You've done 250,000 miles in it. From what you've told me, barely even changed the oil as a Jeff car. Um, and I think, it's, I, no, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> if, if it was an M Sport, you'd have got rid of it ages ago because the suspension would have either been broken or just been too hard. If it was a manual, you'd have got rid of it because commuting is just way easier with an automatic. I think it's perfect. How many miles do you cover by driving to the end of the Ford and then reversing back? <laughs> <laughs> Does it wind the clock back or not? Ferris Bueller would say no. It's so close. Hey, there you there go. go. 300,000. 300,000 miles. Right, hang on, I'll jump out, you reverse back in the Ford and I'll film from the bridge. 300,000 miles on this BMW E46 320D saloon with, from what I can understand, very minimal maintenance. Is he gonna give us a high speed pass? I don't think so, because he's very sensible. So, a great adventure, and we had a lovely time. I left Ian, and I went to the pub in my Saab 95 Aero, and uh, I actually left it there all weekend because I had far too many drinks on the Friday nights. If I hadn't had so many drinks, I probably would have gone and rescued Ian. I'm a little bit gutted. I'm happy I got to 300K. I'm gutted it's died. And worst of all, it died on the side of a motorway. Not somewhere warm, not anywhere with food, and not anywhere near a nice country pub. And for that reason, it's failed me. Not the fact the timing chain's gone. So, I've been picked up. Hey, hey man, awesome. Really nice bloke. I've been taken to a service station so another AA man can come out and check my diagnosis. I'm hoping it's not the timing chain, but it's, it's the timing chain. But let's focus on something here. That's a Starbucks, and Starbucks sell coffee, and coffee is warm. So I'm going to go and get a coffee, and I'm going to watch my car in the car park, and wait for a man to come out and tell me it's broken. And then another yellow taxi is going to turn up and take me home. Yeah. I've kept this car for so long. We've done so many miles. We've done so many adventures. And if you have a listen, 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 listen. See, it coughed. But those valves have met a piston or two. But I am just thinking about it. When it failed, the engine revs went straight down to zero. So does an automatic gearbox disengage the engine as soon as the engine loses power? If so, just how broken is that engine? Because clearly the timing chain's gone, but the timing chain is still visible through the oil cam. So it's going to be the chain that goes up from the bottom of the engine, or has a tensioner just gone? I mean, there's only one way to find out, and that's to pull the cylinder head off. And there's nothing more I like to do on the weekends than to take the cylinder head off a 300,000 mile BMW that's probably not worth fixing. But I kind of want to know why it's died. So the question is, what should Ian do with his 300,000 mile, two owner from new, family pet BMW? 
should he continue to investigate the problem, continue to spend money on it and um, get the car back on the road regardless of the cost or considering he hasn't spent too much money on it throughout its life, should he quit while he's ahead and retire the car knowing that it's done its job? Let us know in the comments and I'll pass your feedback on to Ian. Jeff buys cars. Still, YouTube's most boring car channel.